Now today we're looking at the oil pressure switch on this Honda S2000. Now you may be doing this because the low oil pressure light is currently on the gauge cluster and you want to verify that you do not have a mechanical issue. Now this vehicle happens to be a 2000 model year with 170,000 miles. It's something I picked up around a year ago and I'll include a playlist if you just quickly want to see how I rebuilt this car. But that being said, the first thing you want to do is protect your beautiful car. Place down a moving blanket. These are inexpensive from Lowe's Home Depot. Less than $10. Protect your paint. It's the last thing you want to do is scratch it up. Secondly, check the engine oil. It goes without saying, if that light is on, the low oil pressure light, make sure you have enough engine oil. Okay? Now, let's take a look at the switch itself. Now, looking on the passenger side of the vehicle, right here is the VTEC solenoid valve. Look directly below it, right here. This is your oil pressure switch. And you'll find a small fastener. That is a 7 millimeter fastener. So once again, 7 millimeter, quarter inch socket, and a quarter inch ratchet. Now be really careful because it's very, very small. There we go. I'll place this actually, let's see, maybe actually held in here. Nope, there we go. I'll just place this right back in here so we don't lose it. Now fortunately, testing the switch is incredibly easy. The only thing that we need is a digital multimeter. These are very inexpensive. This one is $20 off Amazon, and I'll include a link in the description box below in case you do need one of these. And here is just a piece of wire with two alligator ends. Again, purchased off Amazon. Not necessary, but you'll see this just makes the job a little bit easier. Now with your alligator clip, just place it on the fastener. Just like that, makes it really, really easy. Okay. Now on the multimeter, you have a number of different functions, but the function that you want is called continuity. It simply means two points make a connection. So if you look on the meter right here, it looks like a Wi-Fi hotspot. Make sure you're on that setting for continuity. So you can see it right here on the screen. And simply, if I touch the black and the red lead, we have continuity. That's what we're testing on the switch. So here's the alligator wire coming from the oil pressure switch. Place it to the red or the positive lead. Black is good ground, okay? So in other words, you want a metal point on the car. So I'll try the exhaust manifold. So with the black lead, and you hear that? Now this is a good sign. This is what you want to hear. Continuity when the engine is off. Now we're going to start the vehicle, do the exact same test. So I'm not moving anything. I'm keeping everything the way it is. I'm not worried about the fans because they're right here so I don't have to worry about the wire getting chewed up. Nothing like that. We're okay. But start the vehicle, do the same test, and there should be no continuity. You should hear no audible alert. Okay, here we go. Make sure I'm in neutral. All right. Now, maybe a little too loud to hear, but clearly there's nothing going on here. The flip side is you can look at the front panel. Typically, when you have continuity, you'll see some numbers pop up there. There's nothing going on here. So this is a good working oil pressure switch. Now if you do need to replace the switch, the size is 24 millimeters. So you, you'll need a 24 millimeter socket, a ratchet, and just spring it loose. And I'll also include a link right now on the screen on the top right hand corner to a previous video I did years ago replacing a leaking oil pressure switch. It's easy enough. Just remove the old one and install the new one. Now what do you do if that low oil pressure light is on and you've tested the switch? The switch is working perfectly fine. What's the next step? Well what you'll need to do is examine the health of the lubrication system. In other words, the oil pump. And it's actually quite simple. 
So what you'll need to do is remove the oil pressure switch. Again, 24 millimeter socket. Remove it from the engine and either rent, if you can find one, rent or purchase an oil pressure gauge kit. Now, unfortunately, I do not have one here, but I do have a compression tester. And they both look incredibly similar in the sense that you have a number of different adapters. So let's say, for example, this was the correct adapter for the S2000. You just insert it into the engine, tighten down the connection, and on the opposite end, you insert it into the gauge. That's it. Then you start the vehicle and just verify that you do have a reading on your, uh, on your gauge, but let the vehicle warm up. You want the fans to turn on at least twice, the radiator fans, the cooling fans. And once the vehicle is properly warmed at idle for at least the AP1s, you want a minimum of 36 PSI. Now, if you're below that number, you may just have a clogged oil filter. This is something many people overlook. So if it's a vehicle like this one, which just sat for many, many years, replace the filter, replace the oil, and then redo the test. Again, minimum 36 PSI. If that looks okay, raise the RPMs to 3,000. You should see a minimum of 85 PSI. And that's it. Now, if, you, if you're still below, below those numbers, then you may have a problem with the oil pump and then, you know, that's com something completely different. You got to start tearing down the engine. But before you even start doing that, you can simply do this at home instead of paying a shop to do this. That will charge you easily a couple hundred bucks. You could do this at home, verify what's going on with your vehicle and go on to the next step. And as we go on here and continue, I will add more videos to the S2000 playlist. And as always, thank you for watching.